Hi there, I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters and I am a soul sculptor. What I do is I help you, I help you break out of the mold, out of the past story, the self-pity, the unhappiness. That's what I do. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. I coach and help women and men to be happy. And I had a lady ask me today, how do I love myself? And so I'm gonna boil it down to five really simple steps. Now, it sounds like it would be easy and simple, but you know, and it can be, yes. So I wanna just kinda of take all the, the worries, take all the, um, whatever stress that there might be about, geez, how do I figure this out? I'm gonna take that right off right now. And so right now, let's just take a deep breath together. And what that does is it centers us in the now, in the present. <clears throat> One of the things that happens when we don't love ourselves, we focus on the past, we regret what happened, we complain about those people that hurt us. We may still be feeling a lot of pain and sorrow and suffering from all those things that happened, maybe 30, 40, or maybe even longer. Because I've been working with a man in his 70s who doesn't love himself. So if, if you've had patterns of telling your story over and over again, so let's just close that book right now because we have to stop telling the story. I could write a few books and I have about the past that I have undergone, but now I've turned the page and now I'm happy and this is how I did it. So number one, the first thing that we have to do is focus on you. Get to know you. What is the first thing you do when you meet somebody new? Hi, how do you do? What do you do? What do you like to do? What do you do for fun? Right? Ask those questions of you. This is time to focus on you and I'm giving you full permission to focus on you. What do you like to do? What is fun for you? What are you passionate about? Write a list of all those things. Get to know yourself on an intimate level. For the first time in your life, you have full permission to focus on you. So you also, besides putting the focus on you, you want to be kind to you. What do you do when you meet a stranger? You're kind to them. You don't treat them like crap. You don't tell them how stupid they are or, boy, you should have known better. Hopefully not. You don't do those things to you either. Okay, put the focus on you and make it positive. Get to know you. It's like dating yourself. So I'm going to go over those questions again. What do you love to do? What are you passionate about? And what's the most fun thing that you like to do? So those are some things to help you get started. The second thing we need to do is forgive everyone. Yes, even those that have hurt you. How do you do that? It's a very simple thing and I have lots of articles about forgiveness on my blog, Jennifer Elizabeth Masters at blogspot.com and on my website, jenniferelizabethmasters.com. But I'm gonna go over that right now. And it doesn't matter how bad the hurt was, we have to forgive because if we don't, we're hanging on to anger and resentment and it hold, we're holding it in our bodies. And so it hurts and harms us. And yes, it's a big thing, but I'll tell you, it's a life changer. So the way we do that is the Ho'oponopono prayer. It's very simple, but I'll tell you, it works. You focus on yourself first, so go into your heart, take a deep breath. I'm sorry. 
please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Say this prayer over and over slowly, forgiving yourself for anything that you've done, any regrettable moments that you've had, any time you hurt someone else. Forgive yourself first for everything. Forgive yourself for asking for these things to happen. And yes, you did. Maybe you don't remember, but I've got news for you. We all asked for these situations to come into our life to teach us something. And whether you believe that or not, that's fine. You don't have to believe me, but I'm here to tell you that if you can forgive everyone, it will change your life. So it's the Ho'oponopono prayer. So now the third thing that you need to do to love yourself is to take responsibility. Okay, so maybe your parents abandon you emotionally or physically or they hurt you or maybe they um, abused you emotionally or maybe you were sexually molested. Whatever happened in your childhood, it happened. Yes, it did and I'm sorry that it happened but we have to take responsibility for our happiness or we'll never be happy. Because if we keep blaming everyone else, and believe me, I know what that does because I did it for many years. When we blame everyone else, we're not taking responsibility for our health. We're not taking responsibility for our happiness. So we have to let go of that blame. We have to move out of victimhood because being a victim doesn't make us happy. So in that taking responsibility for ourselves, we're saying, I take responsibility for all of it. I created it. I created it. I created it. And you can say thank you three times. It will help move you out of that victimhood or get an energy clearing. That would help you too. So the other thing that we're taking responsibility for is our thoughts. Because if we're telling ourselves nasty things, if we are telling ourselves that we're stupid, we're ugly, we're fat, we're too old, we're not smart enough, we're not good enough, whatever it is that's negative, you want to let that go, take responsibility, and turn it around to something positive. If you were a newborn baby, would you be saying those things to you? Of course not. So think of yourself as a newborn child and be kind, be loving, be accepting, and make your thoughts positive. So take responsibility for your thoughts. Now the other thing we have to take our, our responsibility for, and that's the big one, emotions. Emotions are meant to move. We're not supposed to stay angry or stay resentful or any of those other things. And the more emotional that we are, the more drama we have in our lives, which is not good, and the more, the more conflict and upsets we have. So we want to take responsibility for our emotions. It's good to feel the emotions, allow it, them to move through us, and all you do is you step forward energetically, move towards the emotion, instead of trying to not look at it or avoid it. So part of loving ourselves is not avoiding our emotions. So we want to allow those things to dissipate by feeling them fully instead of ignoring them or denying them. So that's what I mean by taking responsibility for our emotions. And then of course if we get upset with someone, it is our stuff not theirs, so we need to also say, I take responsibility for being triggered. I recognize it's my stuff. Oh, it's way more fun to blame other people. Yes, it is, but it's not responsible, and it certainly isn't awakened consciousness. So we have to move out of the blame thing. And if anyone in my family is listening, I hope you are, I love you, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the, the next thing is, number four, we have to be positive. We have to be positive in our thoughts, positive in our reactions. 
We have to be careful how we react when somebody gets us upset. We, we don't want to be negative. We don't want to be a naysayer or a complainer because complaining makes us feel bad. It lowers our vibration. So we have to be positive about ourselves and others. You also don't want to gossip. You don't want to talk about other people behind their backs or, or, or talk to your friend about someone else in a negative way. That's not helpful and it sure isn't loving. So we have to treat others the way we want to treat ourselves and the way we want to be treated. So being positive with our thoughts, words, emotions, and deeds. And number five, we have to see the gift in the past. Everything that happened, happened for a reason, to teach us a lesson. And if you keep repeating the same lesson, you keep attracting the same type of person with the same type of attributes. For example, you keep attracting alcoholics or, or, or someone who cheats on you. You haven't gotten the lesson yet. And when you get the lesson, we need to be grateful. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for teaching me what I needed to see. Thank you for showing me my personal pattern. Thank you for showing me that I attract men who are angry and alcoholics, like someone in my past, perhaps, a father, a mother, whatever it is. Thank the universe, thank God for the lesson and the gift. So we have to see the gift in the past. Okay, so maybe something awful happened in your childhood. I'm sure it did. It happened to all of us. But it happened for us to grow and evolve. And we need to recognize that it had a purpose. And that purpose was to show us, this is where I need to work. This is what I need to really notice. This is where I need to raise my awareness. This is where I need more compassion and more love, more acceptance. And the thing that we look at and see in other people is the very thing that we have in ourselves. So if, if you have friends and certain attributes of their personality bug the heck out of you, it's because you have some aspect of that thing within you, that characteristic or that habit. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over these five things. Again, we're gonna just cycle back. The number one thing is get to know yourself. Get to know yourself as if you were dating you. And how would you be with somebody that you start to date? You'd be on your best behavior. You'd be positive. You would be attentive. You would be kind. So do all those things for yourself. So put the focus on you. Do the things that you love. Find out what you like to do. Find out what you're passionate about and have more of those things in your life. Number two, forgive everyone. And it doesn't matter how bad the horrible thing was. We have to forgive all of those things, all of those people. Otherwise, we're not in, sitting and residing in a place of love. That is the Ho'oponopono prayer. And it is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. The next thing is to take responsibility our, for our thoughts, our words, and our actions. I was late. I'm sorry I was late. Uh, it won't happen again. I'll work harder to not be late. So that's an example of how we take responsibility. Instead of making excuses for ourselves, we're taking responsibility. And in that, we take responsibility for our health as well. The next thing is, number four, be positive. Don't complain, don't gossip, and, and don't be negative. So we're turning everything around to positive. And I, I hear some people going, oh, that's impossible. No, it's not, because I do it. And the more positive that we are, the better our life becomes, the less conflict that we have, and the more able we are to manifest magic, miracles, and of course, 
wealth and abundance. All of those things come when we raise our vibration and we love ourselves. And then the more loving we are with ourselves, the more attractive that we are to others. And it's an energetic thing. We become a magnet for good things. So that be positive part is it's very important. And then the last thing, number five, is to see the gift in the past. Everyone has a past. Everyone has had trauma. And it happened for a reason. Did you learn what you were supposed to learn from it? Did you become more loving? Did you become more forgiving? Are you more compassionate? See the gift and the lesson. What did I learn? What was the gift? I hope this helps. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. Love yourself fearlessly. Thank you so much for watching.